Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to build a VC Mini. I have all my components. Let's get started. Let's first have a look at the enclosure. It's been 3D printed, but often uh, the holes can be a bit tight. So I take an M3 drill to make sure the holes are wide enough for the screws. Also check uh, if the switches fit and uh, if they don't, I'll have to take out my file and uh, make the hole a bit wider. Also check the display and um, then I'll really put the whole thing together and see if there are no gaps on the sides. Uh, it's usually handy to have this done this before because it may also require a bit of work to get it to fit nicely. Once we're done with the enclosure, we can have a look at the PCB. The first component is one that you only need to do if you have an RGB backlit display. This is one of the trickiest components. It's an, it's an SMD chip that will do the backlight of the uh, RGB display. Um, it's a bit tricky to get it on, but with a bit of patience, and some solder wick, you should be able to get this component in place. After soldering this component, I usually do a measurement test to see if I, all the pins are connected properly. First check in that one. That's the ground connection, that's proper, and the other ones are not connecting. Then we'll check the RGB. No short circuit there. G. That's proper. Uh, then we need to check the plus, which goes to the top, or the bottom, the bottom. The other ones are not connected, and the last one goes from here to roughly here. And there's one point, one point that should connect that one. The one on the top doesn't connect, the one below does, and the rest of them. So it's properly done. Next we'll add the diodes, there's two for the MIDI circuits that go at the bottom that uh, they need to be uh, oriented in the right way. Same goes for the six diodes at the top. Make sure the gray uh, marker is at the correct spot before you solder them. Let's talk about the resistors. First, the R9 can be omitted whenever uh, the uh, SMD chip is there, when there's no chip we need to put in R9 to have a working backlight. Uh, the other resistors, as four of them, uh, go uh, at the places and the values are on the board. So it's quite easy to add them. Also, we have a couple of special resistor networks uh, that need to go in the proper place for 47, 47K. And there's a special one that has a, a common pin on one end that needs to be aligned on uh, that side that I just pointed out. Uh, I usually turn it over using a box or something, uh, solder one pin of each array, and then uh, after that I'll straighten up um, the arrays before I solder them all the way down. There's also a number of capacitors that need to be added, uh, about four or five of them. If you did not do the uh, SMD chip, you don't need to add the capacitor next to that one. Now we've come to the 3.5mm uh, jack connector. It's a very low component, so it can be put pretty early on the board. It just clicks in and you can just solder it pretty easy. Next, we're going to add the uh, holders for the uh, little chips, the optocoppler and the memory chip, these uh, slot in and they need to be soldered at the back. I always align them first before I finally solder them. And also we're going to add the headers for the Teensy. These are 20 pin headers that are a bit uh, too short, but I'm not using all pins. So the top uh, header is 20 pins, there's a 5 pin one below and a 14 pin at the bottom. And we'll also add the pin headers to them and break off the pins so that each uh, header has the proper pins. And finally I can add the Teensy, it's a bit uh, trying 
it's a bit of work to try and fit it in, but uh, you usually manage after a while, and then you can solder down all the pins. Uh, once you have everything aligned, Next, we'll add the female position headers that will hold the NeoPixel LEDs. There's three of them. And uh, I usually use something to turn the board over. Then just solder one pin so I can actually straighten them up afterwards before I solder all the pins of these headers. Also, the power uh, barrel will go in. It really only fits one way, but you have to make sure it's down properly before you solder the final pin. Also, the capacitors go in. They need to be aligned with the minus uh, to the correct side. Um, and we'll put in the uh, pop meters for the display. There's two types. One type comes with the RGB display. Um, they both have a different footprint, but both types will fit as I added extra holes to the PCB. Next, we're going to add some wires to the Teensy. I usually prepare them, just shortly solder them to the PET mark D plus and D minus. The other end of the wire, uh, I cut them to short length, prepare them by stripping them and putting some solder on them. And then I put them in the two holes on the PCB marked D plus and D minus, and then I solder it down. Next, we'll do the USB, uh, um, USB connectors. This is the B type. I straighten those uh, wings on the side, put it down, align it, and then uh, connect all the pins. Um, and I often, uh, then I need to bend the pins down and solder them to really firmly connect, uh, make that connection. The host uh, connector, USB host connector, clicks in easily and can be soldered after that. It's one of the easier connectors to do. Then we have to do the MIDI uh, connectors, all three of them can go on the board and uh, to uh, align them I just first solder the center pin and then after that I can push down the connector to make sure it's all the way down and all the way straight. Here I'm pushing it down and then I can finally solder the last pins. Next we'll add the power regulator. That's slots in nicely at the proper spot. Then we'll add the, uh, the ICs uh, into the sockets. Um, and then we'll move on to the display. Now uh, the um, Adafruit displays often need the header uh, added. So uh, I just uh, break the pins and solder them down. Solder them to at least one um, and straighten it up. Then I'll uh, add the uh, distance buses to the uh, PCB and we use the stacking headers to um, and add them in this way to the display um, and the short one has to be on the proper side then I'll add the screws and everything add it to the board so I'll get the proper distance between the display and the main board once everything is soldered, um, we can uh, connect power to it and see a flashing LED LED, um, but no backlight yet because we first need to upload the uh, hardware test sketch. To upload the sketch, I'm uh, opening GitHub uh, and going to the vcontroller repository, open the firmware tab, go to compiled, and here I can download the hardware test VC mini revision B and I'll just uh, save the link to the desktop. And uh, the second uh, tool we're going to need is uh, the Teensy loader. You can just Google it and it'll be the first hit you'll find. 
here you have to find it for your uh, operating system and just get the uh, TNZ loader image. Once that's done, you can uh, open uh, or install the uh, the DMG in this case because I'm on Mac and uh, um, inside the DMG is the actual uh, loader app. Uh, now before we open it we have to press the button on the TNZ. I do that by using a small screw as M3 sticking it through the hole and pressing the button. Uh, then I can open the, uh, the app. Uh, the first button will uh, uh, allow me to open the hex file we just downloaded. I have a couple of versions here but this is the correct one. The second one will actually program the unit and the third one will reboot the TNZ. On the VC Mini we see that the backlight has come on. All we need to do is turn up the brightness of the display and there it's all working. Lovely. Next we'll add the encoders. Uh, I usually straighten up the uh, wings uh, a bit, test it on the back and then uh, when it all fits I'll push it in at the front and I'll usually just connect uh, two of the pins add the nubs and then uh, put it in the enclosure. So I'm sure that the uh, encoders are straight and you can freely operate the switches. And then I can solder the more pins of the encoders. Moving on to the switches, we have these special uh, wires with PCB connectors. Um, I uh, solder them to the a proper place, cut the wires to length and then connect those uh, after preparing them, con connecting those to the switches. I usually put solder on the switch and the wire before I put the two together. After the switches are done we will uh, add the NeoPixel LEDs. These have four legs and there are two longer legs that need to be on the right side. We'll slightly pull the legs apart and then we can add them to the sockets. And um, there's no need to cut anything, it'll just fit like that. Once the LEDs are in, we can run the test sketch again and see if they work, which they do. And then we'll screw the switches to the enclosure. Once everything is put together, we can uh, connect it to a computer, upload the firmware, and then we can connect some devices to the VC Mini and see if it works. And there you go, it uh, has working MIDI. Excellent. Finally, we'll uh, add the last screws and the rubber feet that go below the en enclosure. And then uh, the VC Mini is ready, ready to hit the road. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you want more information about the VC Mini project, please check the links in the description. Have a great day.